and now it's saying that the broadcast is live. I think it was delayed. So I'm going to introduce myself again, and if not, you get twice the introduction, because I like talking <laughs> to myself. So hi, everyone. Welcome to your virtual star party for the 10th of November 2013. I'm your host, Scott Lewis. Fraser is playing dad for a birthday now that he's back in Canada. So if you've never seen our show before, what we do is we hook up telescopes and we stream their views live onto the internet for free to let the entire world know what's going on in the universe. And YouTube's live. Hi, YouTube. I'm hearing myself. Yay. <laughs> so we have two we have two telescopes today. Or tonight. Or oh, it could be today, depending on where you're at. And I hear no loud noises from Stuart. Yeah, and sorry, I'm going that, to mute him. I dropped my mouse. Sorry. I'll I'll shut up. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> So with us tonight, David Dickinson from Florida. How you doing, David? Hey, pretty good, pretty good. I'll be bringing the moon. Bringing here. the moon with two cameras. Yeah, I'm wide hearing. in, wide in, zoomed in this time. So sweet. I'll switch also, over to it. For some further away objects, we have Roy Salisbury. How you doing, Roy? I'm doing good. Fantastic. For the peanut gallery, I mean color commentary. <laughs> We have Stuart Foreman from Hi. the Francisco area. Hi. So, Stu, I, I hear we, we might actually have you back to where we it, don't have to see your face anymore, right? Uh, hopefully, yeah, because I'm pretty ugly. But the, uh, <laughs> yeah, with probably, hopefully within two weeks I'll be back online again. Awesome. So, you know, we'll we'll see. I just so, because I know people have been really screaming for me. My focuser has been out, so... It, um, it's, it's I, people just won't shut up about it. I know, you. They I know. Want I just, it, they want know, more Foreman. Yeah, I know. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you gotta, you gotta, you know, represent the refractors. Exactly. And... Well, we got, we got a refractor here now, so. Yeah. That's right. Well, I'm using my no, RC he's... tonight. Oh, you, you are? Okay. Yeah, I don't have my refractor up on my other mount yet. Oh. See, see what you're making us do. We're, yeah. we're going through refractor withdrawals. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, th I think Roy's going to have to explain his, what an RC is, though. So I think I we can do that. It. Yeah, that's fine. Also, with us today, uh, Tom. How you doing, Tom? We haven't seen you Pretty in a good. while. Yeah, no, it's the first chance I've had to uh, be back online for a while. I usually hang out in the peanut gallery, but my uh, upload speeds have been slow. Okay. Well, we'll figure something else to to do about that. You know, yeah. whether doing some stillment. Still images or something like that in the future, but it's good to have you back. Uh, hand that, gestures. We are <laughs> definitely known for our hand gestures here at the VSP, and they're they are G-rated people. Yes, they are G-rated. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. Yeah, so, Nicole does the oops, sorry. No, yeah, Nicole does the <laughs> flocculence. So do I, though. But yeah. that's when we're talking about galaxies, and we'll get to those mm -hmm. a little bit later. So for everything going on, I'm going to let you all know, our viewers, how you can get a hold of us. So the easiest way for me to hear from you is to be on YouTube. So we are broadcast live not only on Google+, Plus but on YouTube. So please feel free to give a comment and subscribe to the channel, which is me. And we're working getting everything transitioned. Also, subscribe to Universe Today, which is Fraser Kane's channel. So we're either going to be live from, from my channel or from Fraser's as we go week to week to week. And we've been having a lot of fun with YouTube lately. So please comment on YouTube, also in the event page on Google+. Plus. Also, if you, if you do have your own astrophotography you want to share with us during the show, please do. You can do that actually in the event page on Google+. Plus. Uh, make sure it's your own, though, because if it's not, I will remove it because I'm a jerk like that. So but we want to see what you're doing because it's really awesome to be able to work with the astronomers here live in the show and also see what you're able to do across the world as we're going. So let's go ahead and get started, and I will be watching for comments because it looks like there's a ton of comments going on. Uh, David, what are we looking yes. at? That is the waxing gibbous moon. It just passed first quarter yesterday, and it's actually, we got a nice profile with the, the lunar highlands and the lunar Apennines, and, and the, you can see a lot of good profile with craters and stuff like that. Incidentally, this, this is a Microsoft live cam uh, webcam just afocally aimed at the telescope eyepiece. It's not hooked directly into the telescope. I've got. I'll probably. I'll switch over to the webcam on the laptop probably in a bit, so you can actually see the setup here. But this, I was just experimenting with this tonight. 
It's, yeah, it's I, a lot of fun, that, that cam, for doing it, a night focal setup. I, I'm surprised the image it gives. I mean, it's it's got a little bit of uh, a glare on it there. I put a polarizer on the end of the eyepiece because I realized I don't have the webcam controls here in Google+, Plus, so I can't uh, dim the camera or do any of the things I could if I had uh, just the camera software running. Are you so running I, on PC or uh, oh, yeah, Windows PC. or Mac? It's it's a PC. Okay, there is if you, you can get the live cam software and it will run concurrently with the Google Plus Hangout and you oh, can weird. change all your settings live as you're doing it and that's yeah because because I, I can do that with my other webcam that I'm going to hook up here in a moment that I zoom in because I keep the software running so I can yeah uh, what what I did since I didn't have time starting this to to fiddle with it is I just plopped a, a polarizer I got a variable polarizer on the end of it to kind of dim it down. Uh, to cut the glare, but but right now it's fixed. I can't zoom it in or anything. But but uh, you're, there's a little bit of cloud cover here too. That's what okay. I think giving that little bit of glare on the on the on the limb of the moon there too. And we we've got moisture and fog, and it's just Florida. Yeah, Florida I was saying, you're in Florida. Yeah, it's crappy for astronomy here. That's you, why there's you might no, as well just put it underwater and just. That's, shoot it. that's why there's no major observatories here. There's a few at the universities, but it's a, it's a terrible place to astronomy. <laughs> Well, and also, I want to mention real quick, too, we are using the Q&A app on, on Google+, Plus too. So that is another way that you can ask questions. I will try to get to them. And actually, there is one right here that we do want to address before we go further, because David actually talked about it on Friday. And um, it goes, let me see if I can select it and pop it up here. Gochi, let me guess. Gochi, yep. Where yeah. is the satellite? I was hoping to hear from that. Uh, we, we, we were tracking it earlier tonight. Uh, there was a pass over the U.S., a shadow pass. Unfortunately, uh, everybody I heard that was watching didn't see a re-entry then. It may be down already. I think it's already down. Uh, ESA uh, hasn't confirmed it yet. Uh, NORAD hasn't confirmed it. I was, I was watching on Space Track and refreshing on Space Track to see if uh, NORAD sent out a, a confirmation decay message, but in all likelihood it's re-entered. It, it, may be a, it may be a day or two before we know exactly where, if, right. unless, unless there's something that pops up where somebody says that uh, some video footage surfaces or anything like that. But, uh, well, I know where it's not. <laughs> well, it's, there, a lot of the Earth is just uninhabited, so these re-entering satellites, a lot of times, they just splash down where nobody, nobody sees them. But... Uh, it's once they stop, it, it was tracking data right up until re-entry too. So. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's a. It, See, it's, no one knows except for the NSA. The NSA all. Yeah. Knows. Well, they they know, of course. But, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, in in things you see around Twitter, we were starting to see, um, like if you see old mirror footage or scenes from Armageddon or scenes from the Chelyabinsk meteor, people always start tweeting out stuff like that during these reentries, and it's like, it, we obviously know they're fake because we we've all seen those photos before. <laughs> yeah. This is not our first rodeo with reentries, so please stop putting yeah. Bruce Willis all over Twitter. It's not going to help. <laughs> and there was another reentry going on, so let's 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 get both of these going for for the Soyuz. multiple comments everywhere. So yes, yeah, so going on? Soyuz is coming home too. The, the population in space is decreasing by three tonight, from nine down to six. So uh, there's there's uh, expedition crew members. Uh, they're probably they're probably down by now. I'm not tracking it anymore, but they they probably reentered just a, uh, they probably landed out in Kazakhstan just a few hours ago, or a few minutes ago. Oh. So welcome back, boys. Yeah, and that's girls. the one with the torch, right? Yes. Yeah, the Olympic torch is coming back. Uh, yeah. it's Luca, Luca I, Parmitano, uh, Karen Nyberg, and I don't know the Russian cosmonaut's name off the top of my head. I don't have it in front of me right now. But Why not? You're supposed to be prepared, David, <laughs> for anything. Well, Karen Nyberg is the first quilter in space that I'm aware of. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I was going to go for that. I was going to be the first quilter in space. <laughs> <laughs> you can be the it's, first needle pointer. I am say I can there cross stitch. Let's yes. cross stitch yes. in space. That'll be awesome. Cross, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to move on over to Roy real quick, and we'll hit the moon throughout the, throughout the rest of the night. So what do we have here today, Roy? You have M57, the oh. ring nebula, in all its beautiful color. She's so pretty. Yes. What camera are you using, Roy? I am using my uh, STT 8300. It's a it's a monochrome, but I have figured out how to do the automated tricolor imaging with my software. So Cheating. yeah, I just take yeah. I take one. These were individual uh, 120 second images that automatically got stacked. Oh, using what software? Uh, Maxim. Oh, okay. 
You need to so, post how you do that. What's that? You need to post how you do that. I, I, I have a, a, a ST8 a camera with a filter wheel on it, and I haven't yeah. been able to figure out how to do the auto stacking. Oh, yeah, it's just one click button on in Maxim. It just When you take the picture, it'll automatically uh -huh. take the red, the green, the blue, combine them together, and give you a color picture. You don't have to do anything. So we'll, you know, oh, wow. we'll so, have me as a bald astronomer, Tom is a soggy astronomer, and Roy is the pampered astronomer. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Roy, does it, does it auto register and, and auto? Yep. Huh. I have all my calibration groups set up cool. so it automatically calibrates. And huh. I mean, it's only one image of each filter, but. Nevertheless. Oh, any, anyway, M57, this is a, a planetary nebula, so That's this was right. a nova that. that um, that no, blue. No, it's not. What? It's planetary. It no, no, they're not novas. I, it's not. It's, it's, a, it's not a supernova, but it was a nova. No, planetary nebulae happen after the red giant stage, and as things go into a white dwarf. I'm sorry, Stu. I'm totally gonna school you. Okay, it's fine. Because I'm a jerk. You are. But um, <laughs> this is uh, something that our son okay. actually might might uh, be able to do. It depending on, on oh, the mass right. and, the, and the lifetime. So it, as it goes through its final stages and it goes into a white dwarf stage where it, everything shrinks on down, it's not able to actually hold the rest of its matter in it, so it actually starts puffing and sloughing out into space. Well, you're it, talking as if you're, like, going to school or something. I, You know, I, I have, <laughs> I've done a couple things in astronomy here and there. I, I, I might have taught a class or two at, at the you, college. You can, you can see the pseudo-central star in there. I remember Thad saying that's not truly not, the, right. not the white dwarf. But. Right. But it, 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 it's good to imagine that it is, but it's that's actually not the the star. So I don't know if you can zoom in there, Roy, at all from what we're talking about. But there there is a center of mass that's going on, and that little dot here in the center is not its center of mass. But it it's convenient, and it's easy to think that it is. But for so where's reticula is right there, um, that's not the white dwarf in question. But what we're seeing is actually this spherical. You know, sloughing of of gas and the and it's actually being excited because there's still a lot of energy being output from that central star, which is causing that gas to actually glow. I think you got a galaxy I can see up there, kind of uh, in, in in my upper right there. Yeah, I think there's up just, here. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, think so. I remember there's one by M57. There's a an NGC galaxy in that region too. Just line of sight, but. Yeah, I, I always tell people at star parties this looks like a ghost of a donut because it looks it, in the eyepiece when you're seeing it you don't see these colors you just see kind of a gray ring so is that ha what happens when Homer eats donuts you see <laughs> the ghost much. of a donut <laughs> uh, I would say look look for a tiny like smoke ring like a ghost of a donut kind of right. sitting there and, and they're tiny they're super yeah. super tiny oh yeah this one is really small it's even with the focal length that I've got I mean I've got to enlarge it just to see it or embiggen it. And big that's, that's how we do things here. These, we embiggen things. Uh, Charles Messier, when he first compiled the, the catalog of deep sky objects, he had no idea what they were seeing. And they, they the reason they call these planetary nebulas visually through a telescope, they look like the disk of a planet. They right. actually don't have anything to do with planets. But Nothing at all. Misleading. Right. Other than and they tend they're to be visual. bluish too. And yeah. so right I, mean, after. I think it looks like an eyeball. Yeah. This is this is one of my favorite things to find when I'm at s school star parties because it's you, this is e e even before I had a go-to scope. I mean, this is really easy to find if you just uh, it's right in between exactly in between two stars in the constellation of Lara, and um, uh, if you. you teach people how to do averted vision when you're doing the um, uh, when they're looking through the eyepiece and then all of a sudden they'll say oh yeah I kind of see the ring now you know and it's, it's kind of cool yeah. yeah it's not yeah, colored if you, know where like Vega this, is, yeah. if you know where Vega is you can find this easily yeah, I was Vega actually just about to one ask of the you brightest what, stars which, up yeah, there, so. yeah so which constellation are we looking in right now Lyra Lyra, yeah. Lyra. So uh, a quick reminder, too, when we're talking about constellations, we're not necessarily talking about Orion the Hunter or, you know, these these anthropomorphized. They're actually, for astronomers, we're talking about sections of the sky that are up there, and they're divided up to help aim what we're looking for. And we have a Mike Phillips that's joining. I'm glad he said not never, but maybe late. 
let's see if they actually uh, <laughs> play with us tonight. He's trying to get in. Yeah, he's trying to. I, I see him. He just IM'd me. I like how he joined, yeah. and he, then he asked me if there was any room for him. So, yes. <laughs> yes, there is. Go away, Mike. <laughs> when he gets in, everybody be real quiet and pretend we can't hear him. <laughs> it's... it's, it's it, his 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 text is now coming on all my very various devices that are sta- sitting around. Yeah, me. IPad, everything's lighting up. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like, everything's <laughs> lighting up. Incessant. <laughs> yeah, so Google owns everything we do now, which I'm I'm pretty okay with. Google's done a lot of good for me, so I'm happy with that. And I'm saying, yeah, hearing that the parachute's deployed and they are drifting under shoot power at the moment. Oh yeah, so. yeah. Uh, one but, awesome uh, thing with the, the, the Soyuz is that they do drift under uh, parachute until, what, three meters from the surface? I think so. Then they fire, a, like retro. A, yeah. then they fire a retro rocket to, you know, but hey, they, welcome home. They hit hard. They still <laughs> yeah. hit very hard. They say it's like a 40-mile-an-hour car crash when they hit, ah. basically. So. Ouch. It's, like, I, it's I 2013, th- Russia. It's 2013. <laughs> we have better <laughs> think, ways of doing this. I think yeah, the, but big, big springs. I think the re- the recovery crew should all wear uh, ape suits when they land. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome! So I'm gonna head back over to and see what uh, once Mike actually joins us instead of just his avatar. So we'll get back to the moon, and so you said, and actually you can see some of the clouds coming through as well. Yeah, we're getting a little bit of cloud cover here, just very light. Yeah. It's very spooky. Yeah, oh. that is true. Yeah, I can see that. Actually, it's kind of cool with that with contrast. Oh yeah, we're getting clouds from the south. I hope I don't get clouded out. You better not get clouded out. Yeah, because the moon is all I can do with this setup. So, but uh, we'll see. Uh, I can point out the. Uh, we can ahead, point Tom. out the point. Yeah, point out the Apollo 11 landing site for folks. Yeah, I think it's right about. I think we're centered almost on it. In that, uh, I can't yeah. really zoom in with this setup, but it is visible. And yeah, the little bright dot. Just off of left to center. Yeah, if I can write about that that dark patch that's in the center of the field now, I kind of tweaked it up a little yeah. bit. Yeah. But there's there's no other way that I can really. When I get the 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 other webcam in, it zooms in. I can kind of spool around through there. But. And we just almost... got an, an update here from Ciro Villa that uh, Soyuz has touched on successfully. Yay! Yay! Thank you, Ciro. <laughs> and Mike Flat. Yeah, I got. I was reading uh, Space Flight um, 101, and they say that the uh, Goshi has re-entered the atmosphere, but they don't know where it's at. Oh, cool. Maybe it's Spirit Soyuz. This is probably later tonight. NORAD will have a, a decay message out, and then it will kind of trickle yeah. through the rest of the Internet eventually. So I'm going through here, and we're actually getting a message here from Shaw, one of our astronomers in Malaysia, and apparently some really good sunspots mm. going on, really nice and big, but it's also there's really big clouds in the way, too. So, uh, yeah, Shaw, has, uh, if, if you're watching, please, uh, if you can snag a shot, and at least put it in the event page, that'd be awesome. We'd really appreciate that. The, yeah. The sun has been very active, finally, which we're at solar max, so it's supposed to be active. It's, it's been kind of weird that it's been very inactive this year. but It's, it's a late bloomer, okay? Some of us are late bloomers. Don't, don't judge. <laughs> but no, the especially uh, was it Nancy uh, reported on that on the weekly space hangout, and yeah, it's finally coming along. Yeah, we had a few X flares earlier this week, so I'm I'm really excited to see uh, what's going on, especially with uh, the Aurora that come from it. This is the time to go up and see them. So if anyone's living in the you know, you know higher north and also further south, you know, get ready for some some good uh, auroras going on because they're absolutely beautiful. And if they do come in, con- you know, if the uh, solar wind does come our way a little bit stronger than usual, you'll actually get to see a spectacular show. Yeah. Have, have you seen any, David? Uh, when I lived in Alaska, I used to see them uh, all the time in the winter time. Oh, when I lived in Alaska, it was, it was daylight. Uh, I grew up in Maine, used to see them fairly frequently there. But Alaska, they were common enough to be a nuisance when you're doing deep sky photography. It's like, darn, there's aurora again. <laughs> it would wash First out your First world astronomer <laughs> problems. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, but but a, a really awesome aurora show is it's it's right up there with the solar eclipses, like or a, a good meteor shower is probably one of the right. most awesome things you can see when it when they're really active and they're like you can see them moving and you get the reds and the blues and the greens mm-hmm. and it's like it's just awesome. I, I've only seen it live once, and it was it was eleven years ago, so the last uh, solar max I went through, and yeah. this is back when I was back in Michigan. 
And I was in the Detroit area, so you really don't get to see much. But they were so strong that I could actually see them from Detroit, and it was wow. amazing. It was something you just you never thought you'd ever be able to see the auroras from such it's, a. It's know. really eerie to see to just stand out there and watch. It's uh, it, it, because it, it it almost looks like something really. You get the sense of these really massive curtains up overhead. It's yeah. kind, of, kind of awesome to watch. Yeah, something ominous is happening, especially yeah. when you're in an area that you're not used to seeing something like that. I, oh you know, yeah. Just like was a few months ago, people here in LA for the first time actually saw the Milky Way without any optics. They just were able to look up and see the Milky Way. It was six, and people were during, freaking out, like, "What is this thing? There's this big band in the sky." During the during the 1859 Carrington Super Flare event, there were actually aurora as far as south as Puerto Rico, wow. and a lot of a lot of people thought there that there were uh, that there were forest forest fires and things like that because they had never seen that sort of thing. That, Wow. Good lord! That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. This, this, this is—I was saying this is a camera hookup to this telescope right now. It's—it's it's just the webcam literally aimed at the at the eyepiece, and the telescope's aimed at the moon. So, and I've yeah, got this I, bracket here just kind of hooked onto it. So, I, I really think you should experiment with that. I'm, I'm not going to tell you to break your webcam. No. Um, I'm not going to tell you to do that. But tear it apart. I'm wondering what it will do aimed at Jupiter now. That uh, you know, it might get some fairly. You, you might be able to see the moons and Jupiter in, in the same field, like a yeah. wider field view. The, the the software that comes with it, you are able to tweak a lot of the settings on there to to get things out quite nice. So, um, yeah. and especially if you can, um, when I was doing the uh, the Venus transit. I just yeah. made a, a, a makeshift um, eyepiece for it to sit in their afocal and just get it all set up. So all I had to do was just grab it and put it into the into the scope. And having that ready to go is, is awesome. So then you're just set to go anytime you need to hook it up. So we'll I have a white light filter for this scope too, so it should do the sun as well. Yeah, yeah. I've done some shots with the sun on my, my binoculars, actually. Hooked it up to yeah. that, and it was oh, a lot cool. of fun. So I'm going to keep going through the comments and head back over to Roy... Oh wow, Roy! I I don't like you today because I love what you're doing. That is amazing. There is a, another planetary nebula. Mm -hmm. This is uh, M27. Wow. Now this one, apart from the last one where we said the central star was not visible, this one it is. So there's there the blue, yeah. right there. So this is the Apple Core or Omega Nebula. And I, I love the contrast of colors. That's, that's one of my favorites. Is this another, um, this is obviously stacked. Is this another uh, uh, eight-minute exposure? Two for no, these are uh, two minutes per filter. RGB. I mean, so that's, did you have luminance in this or just RGB? No, just RGB. Cool. Hey, Roy, is uh, the helix a little too far south for you? It is. Uh, Helix is just too low. Yeah, I've been I've been wanting to get it so bad, and it's just it's too low. I needed what's, it about a month or so. What's ago. the What's the focal length on your scope? Uh, this scope is uh, thirteen twenty six. Mm. Oh, okay. I have a, it's a it's a ten inch um, RC that native is two thousand. Then I have a focal reducer in it that gets me down to an f five point four. And put, brings it down to about 1,300. Which RC is it? This is the Astrotech. Oh, that one, yeah. The uh, Yeah, the 10-inch um, Astrotech. It's a really nice scope. It took forever for me to figure out the collimation on it to get the mirrors perfectly aligned. But uh, And I still, still think I'm off by a little bit, but I'm not going to touch it anymore. <laughs> so I've got a question here from um, from the Google Plus event page. Let me pull it up here. So Ronald Minch asks, a question on magnitude. Explain it with a telescope and without, as in the ring nebula magnitude and comet Ison at 6.1. So he's got some binoculars, and he was wondering, when we're talking about magnitude as far as with you know, when um, light, what does that mean? Um, I can I can take a stab at that. Um, stab it. Yeah, stab Understood. it. So the the um, uh, the lower the number, the um, more bright things are. And so um, uh, the sun is like a magnitude negative. What is it? Twenty-seven. I think. Twenty-seven. <laughs> it's, yeah. and it's it's logarithmic, so it's like negative twenty-seven. And then Sirius, which is the brightest star in the sky, is like negative. 
negative one point something or other. Venus at its brightest is is a little bit less, more negative than that. So negative two or negative one point something, you know, one point eight. And so when we say the 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 limit of visual magnitude, if you're in a really dark sky and you're looking up and your eyes are completely accommodated. Um, your visual magnitude that you can usually see with good eyes is about um, nine or ten. Um, six is still pretty dim, um, and if you're in any sort of light polluted skies and you're trying to look up and see something small with a magnitude of six, it's going to be a little bit harder to to see it. Most of the stars you look up in the sky, kind of the the dimmer ones, are usually magnitude two or three. Is that about right? Pretty close. Yeah, I'd say so. One yeah. one caveat I would give about um, when you're talking about planetary nebula or comets or things like that is that magnitude is spread out over the surface yes. area, where it's a star, you're looking at a point source. Point source. Uh, usually, I, I think of something being binocular range when it's above tenth magnitude, but in the case of like comet ice and it's just becoming binocular range right now and it's about eighth magnitude because mm -hmm. that, that brightness is spread out over a surface area, so right. it's, it yeah, makes it a little more difficult to see. The one that I've got up there, M27, that's a magnitude of 7.5. Yeah. Right. Right, and that, that you can't really see with the naked eye. First of all, it's too small, um, uh, and so you, you really would need binoculars or uh, a I, small yeah, scope I, to see. I, I, can, I can pick out M27 with the uh, image-stabilized binoculars that are pretty yeah. dark skies. As you can see, it's a little fuzzy smudge. Right. Fuzzy smudge. Yeah. I, I can barely see the Crab Nebula under good skies with binoculars, so, and that's a little tougher. Now, my, now, Mike is here. Mike, can you hear us now? I can hear you. Can you guys hear me? Yes. I can. Do you have a telescope, too? Do you have a telescope, Mike? I do, and I got the guiding set up. I'm having oh. issues with my mount that I need to fix, but it has been stable enough for a couple of nights now. And I'm going to show you this boring star field, and then I'm going to go to yesterday's uh, or two nights ago's data. So in this star field is a near Earth uh, asteroid. Uh, what are they? NEOs or near Earth NEO. objects? Near right. Earth yeah. Object. It is actually something Peter Lake had found. It is uh, 2013 TV-135. Oh, very cool. Uh, and I barely got it. It's somewhere in this field of view here. So I'm gonna somewhere in all the, the little <laughs> dots, dots, there's another yeah. dot. <laughs> there's there's another not dot in there a dot that you would normally see in the field of dots. Right. So Did you put a laser pointer on that? Yeah, it's right, right here somewhere. Oh, the <laughs> That's the witch's broom. Yeah, so let me let me fool around with it. Well, that, so that that was a that that blank boring starfield was one I just captured now. Oh, that's so awesome. Try to fool that's, around with. Is that H A? No, straight up luminosity, and they are all five minute subs. Now, uh, the calculation from the Minor Planet Center. Uh, I think it's around magnitude 18 right now. So it's, I mean, in a five-minute sub in luminosity, it's just barely visible uh, with my kind of shaky tracking right now. So I'm going to see if I can find where it was here. Scott, I'm going to flip over cameras right now, so I'm yeah, going to mute for a moment. You, you say your mic, you say your shaking is tracky, but um, your tracking is shaky rather. But I, your stars are looking pretty round for five minutes. Yeah, it's it's well. Let me see if I zoom in a little bit. I mean, here. I'm sure if you zoom bit. in, you'll see some tracking error. But right. at least with, you know, you're you're you've got a wide field of view. It's you know certainly not not obvious. I mean, I, you should be proud of that image for just a five minute image. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. I probably should. I'd like better. <laughs> a magnitude More. 18 is certainly way down on the scale, right? right. More better, please. More better. Well, More can you better. can you can you stretch it a little bit and bring out some of the the wisp Well, so the only way I was able to see it actually was to use um, this program called Astrometrica, which is actually something that Peter has used to analyze like professional data and find some <laughs> other asteroids of various types. I, I can't even tell which kinds are which. And so I I tried my hand at it just to see if it was any use for me and. This got this neat feature here. You can see little satellites streaking through these a lot. Holy cow! <laughs> um, 
So, so it helped me because it, it creates this animation kind of on the fly. So I take all the subs as they come in, and you can see there's a satellite there, and there's only a couple more as it rolls through this animation here. But it helped oh. me see the motion. It was the only way for me to see it. I knew where it should be, but I couldn't actually see it because it's just it blends almost into the background stars. Right. Yeah. But it popped out when I turned this little animation on. I just got to find out where it was now. Oh, wait, that was okay, Royce. And actually, while we're doing that, I'm going to switch over and share something that Bill McLaughlin, one of our regular astronomers, uh, he's clouded out right now, but he did share an amazing photo. Let me pull this up here. I, I just think this is gorgeous. So this is up on the event page. So if any of you guys are watching us from Google+, uh, go ahead and check that out. But just, oh, Bill, we need you back to... What what is this an image of? I see that he's got thirty one hours of image of exposure time, but I'm trying to oh, see. Is, is this the ghost? No. It's Bill, I know you can hear us comment on VDB nine. <laughs> what the heck is that? Vandenberg or something. I can't remember. I don't know how to pronounce it. Right. Oh, Thad's here. Thad. Yep, Thad just texted me, so he should be. Doing now he that. can tell us what this is. Yeah, and now right, he Thad, <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> No pressure, Thad. Are you there? I know he was just at a concert, so he might be deaf. He might not be able to hear us. Yeah. All right, well, we'll wait. So, But, yeah, the this image here, I mean, Bill did a phenomenal job looking at, you know, this... Whoops, let me go ahead and go back. There we go. The dust lanes going on, just occluding the light That's coming through. amazing. We're trying to figure out what it is. Thad, do you know? I think that dropped out. Oh. All right, cameras are swapped out. But yeah, this BB9. is BB nine. Let me look it up. You yeah. look that these up. are these are all going to be dark nebulous. Mm -hmm. That's the whole catalog is the CDB is all dark nebulous. So VD is for very dark, right? Is that what that stands for? Must be. No, it's, it's Van, uh, Vandenberg or I don't yeah, know yeah. something like that. I've never heard um, of it's that. In the, it's in the constipation. It's the con I'm just looking. The constipation. It's in the constipation. <laughs> yeah. of Cass Cassiopeia. You've been, you've been giving too many colonoscopies. Switch. Yeah, he, he hasn't switched from his day job yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, yeah, it's just a it's just a two reflection nebula, and right. it's VD. It doesn't have a name. It's just VDB nine. Is what it is. Well, and I'm going to name it Purdy in the name of Bill because that, that was amazing, Bill. Thank you for sharing that in there. Yeah. Excellent. So I'm going to head on back over to Roy. Oh, wait. No, I'm going to David. There Maybe the moon. Is. There's a lot of cool shadows Ooh. there right now with those mountains. I think it's, I see a monolith right there in the center. So. Okay, I think I found <laughs> it when you're ready. It's the Moonanites. They built those, right? Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah, you have to really, it's, a, it's always good to look at the moon right around first quarter going on to waxing gibbous or so because you, you get a nice contrast with the shadows. And you can see where the, the sun is just rising in the floors of those craters where they're still in shadow. and It gives a lot. Uh, I always like looking at the moon right around this time. This is right around the lunar Apennines right on uh, Mare Imbrium. Area it's, right on the edge. It's, it's yeah. funny how sunrise and sunset, you know, can be special on one planet, but you know, unique on another yeah. planet too, from a different perspective of across the, yeah. the stars. Well, yeah. it really gives you an appreciation of the topography that's going on there. You know, it, it's it's not just this you know silver disk up in the sky, mm -hmm. that, but it's got a lot of you know the peaks and valleys. You can see the the force that went into causing all these craters to how deep they go just based on the angle of light. I am getting some clouds too, so I'll, I'll try to ride the contrast back and forth to keep uh, adjusting ride, for... Just ride that clouds. contrast, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> you got to take, take the weather when it comes, you know? Yeah. I, I think I've tracked this thing down. If you want to help, help... You guys help me... Think, because the program itself is supposed to do motion tracking, and it did not find this little guy. I found it basically looking... At the uh, ephemeris plots in a in a Stellarium package, so it it follows this path right here. If you can see my my arrow, it kind of shoots mm -hmm. this little gap of stars here. Now it's right here. I'm going to chase it as best I can here. It starts back up there and it's moving this way, just above oh, yeah. my arrow. I, I do see it. Wow. Yeah. Huh. yeah. So that is thir 2013 TV 135. Which... He said Peter found that. 
Well, Peter, Peter photographed it, and I found it in his stream. Uh-huh. And uh, pretty much ever since Pamela and I did one of a really early star party, I don't think it got archived into YouTube, but uh, we shot um, Eros. I think it was the asteroid. It was the, one of the first asteroids that helped plot the asteroid belt or something like. It was it was a famous asteroid in history, and it comes around every so often. So I, I was shooting that with my digital SLR on the same telescope I'm using for this. Right. And I was like, this is cool. I like asteroids, right? So now I've been kind of on an asteroid kick lately, and and I saw Peter Peter posted this one. He I don't think he used his telescope for it. I think he was using the uh, Osiris Rex um, data. And I said, I want to put, I put this on my list of things to photograph, and a couple of minutes ago it was clear and the moon had set, so I took my hand at it. I'm trying it again now to see if I can maybe clean up some of these oblong stars, maybe make this a little more defined so that it's easily picked up. And I think the Minor Planet Center was actually requesting data for this. Oh, nice. They were trying to pin its orbit down. Yeah, that, is, that these... is a high interest object. That was the one that yeah. they were, they, were uh, they, they thought, I think it was 30 or 40 years from now, that there was a slim chance that it, it might impact. Like, right. It was like ranked, a, what, one on the something for scale? A very, for a very brief time on the Torino scale, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, but once we refine these orbits, usually that, that, uh, that clears, that lowers the probability quite a bit. Mm-hmm. And it's Thad. Can you hear us, Thad? So you guys see. Can you speak to us, right? Thad? Can you <laughs> use your words? I think so. I think Yay! so too. Yay! The celebrities he are here. Speaks. <laughs> <laughs> How's you guys it going? were looking good so on you... some of the photo shoots we saw. Uh, I can't wait for the final product. And you survived the concert. Congratulations. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. No concert was. Uh... Don't, don't even talk about it right now. Okay. I, I'm right. angry at you about that. What did you see? Nine Inch Nails. Oh, yeah. I, oh, I heard they're cool. great. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they're amazing live. I'm really jealous. Yeah. Uh, and real quick, thank you to Apollo is Go on YouTube. So it stands, uh, the VGB stands for Sidney uh, Vandenberg. He's a well-known Dutch-Canadian astronomer. And the VDB catalog uh, is of dark nebulae, or you can call it the very dark blob catalog. <laughs> I've never heard of that. That's kind of cool. That's, I learned something. Never heard of that catalog. So thank you, Apollo is Go. You are awesome. And so the whole convergence of YouTube and Google Plus isn't that bad, right? We need to learn things from each other. We can get along, and it's not that bad. I promise. Well, it could be that bad. You know, YouTube comments are notorious. But I won't judge. Be nice to us, and we'll be fine. So I'm going to... Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I actually... uh, Part of the reason I was late is that I assigned, you know, my students to, to make these sketches of the moon through the telescope and I just realized I'm not sure if I had ever done it so I had the 25 by 100 binoculars out in the front yard oh, and cool. was, uh, was kind of sketching away to get a feel for well how much detail can they get in uh, in the, the time out there if they're if they're good about it and, yeah okay I think you know if, if they, they can probably get a good 30 or so feature sketched in that time so well let's see your sketch yeah. yeah. Uh, let me. Okay. All right. Yeah. I, I got to really get it. It's actually hard. Yeah. I've tried it is before. really hard. Yeah. Actually, yeah. It's, it's harder than you think. All right. I'll, I'll be right back. Give me a second here. Yeah. Just sure. draw a circle with a bunch of little <laughs> blobs. Yeah. Mickey yeah. Mouse. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's not so, one of those psychology tests. Come on, guys. Ah, yeah. Let's know. let's <laughs> let's see let's see Roy's Western Veil. I want to see that. Oh, there we go, Roy. Oh wow. I love it. So how long, uh, this was what, five minutes? This was uh, three minutes hydrogen alpha. Yeah, this looks like a new shape. This is what I thought, this was when I was talking about the Western Veil and I, when Mike was up, I thought this, I just had the wrong screen. This is what I was looking at. That's, that's wonderful. So we're watching just a, a tiny part of a supernova remnant. So... Well, 5,000 years ago, I want to say it was, when the supernova went off. And if we could actually zoom out, uh, which you just need to take many, many photos to do, you can actually see the full spread of what happened here. And we're just seeing one tiny part of this remnant of a supernova. And you can just see the the wisp and the tendrils going on. It looks really good when you get the narrow band images. I mean, to make it in color or false color, it looks just spectacular. Now, are you able to get the, the... We're looking at the Western Veil, right? This is the Western. Could you get the Eastern Veil in as well? Uh, I can. I'll put it on the list as soon as this one's finished. Yeah, that would be right great. Now. I love seeing the Eastern Veil as well. So we can see you know different parts of this enormous object in the sky. 
I, I mean, kind of like my wife's idea when I ran to get this. She was like, well, you should just post a picture of the moon and see if they... See what they, if they notice. <laughs> yeah, put it through Instagram and do like, the little sketch thing on it. Like, see, this is what I did. I know what's your problem, guys. <laughs> Um, I I'm aimed right on the edge of the sea of tranquility right now. Oh, very uh, good. Uh, I I know I I can see those those that doublet of craters there, is Sabine Crater. So I know that's very close to the Apollo 11 landing sites. Probably right below that. Scott, frame. can you see my Western Veil there? This is an old image that I did. I don't know if I'm screen sharing it right. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, you are. Oh, yeah, that so looks great. So this is the same thing. This is 45 oh, cool. minutes. This is 45 minutes of hydrogen alpha, not just. Five, cool and so you can wow. see, see what you nice. have with the with the data. Oh, Very that's nice. awesome! Yeah. I'm gonna head over to Thad too. Take a look yeah. at it. It's a cool. I think that's the first sketch we've ever had in a virtual star party. Yeah, I think so is. too. <laughs> this <laughs> old sc old school screen sharing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Here you go. <laughs> we should have an all sketching virtual star party. We should. We <laughs> oh, do it old school. <laughs> it's like, oh wait, wait. But the uh, but for audio, we need a telegraph. There's an observing group or something that does nothing but sketches, and I mean, you have there, to sketch yeah. everything. There is an astronomy sketch of the day, just like astronomy photo of the day. Yeah, uh, that's awesome. A bunch of the very <laughs> first, uh, the very first star party that I had went to, a guy was there and had a, this huge Dobsonian, and he had a, a book. I mean, it must have had fifty or sixty pages in it of all the different sketches he'd done of globular clusters. It's it's wow. very difficult. I've I've sketched Mars during opposition, and it's it's more difficult than than people think. Yeah, yeah it I, is. I know one thing that I kind of screwed up is that you know I, I did some along the Terminator, and then I kind of started with, um, let's see, also up with with uh, the the Apennines and Mare Frigoris and and whatnot up here, and then trying to fill in through Mare Serenitatis and Chrysium and and Tranquillitatis, and they don't match when you get down to the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> so. But yeah, it is. It is pretty Your tricky. Scale is off a little bit. Much. Scale scale gets off a little bit. I think right. I also st tried coming in with with Tycho. That's in in shadow. It's right on the Terminator, and trying also to come up from the bottom a little bit. And some somewhere at the bottom of Mari Fecundatatus, yeah, things don't line up too well. And, well, Michael but, Fields Jr. comments on here about sketching. It says draw a sphere and then divide it into eighths. Then another circle at the halfway point, and it makes it easier to sketch the moon that way. Sketch, so sketching. Okay. Sketching visually, you you actually see more at the eyepiece. The more you you start sketching, you start seeing a lot of detail that you probably wouldn't see at a right. cursory glance too. So it it, it has its uses. Well, That's even why I make sketching my is still used on the on the solar towers up at Mount Wilson. So every yeah. single day they do a brand new sketch. They've been doing them for as long as they've been up there. I've too. heard of that. Yeah, it's awesome going up there and watching them do the sketch. It's so cool. So they have this enormous what's the 150 tower. Yeah, the that? UCLA runs the 150 foot solar tower up there. So and oh, it's it's great going up there and watching them. They have this big stack of sketches of the sun that they do every single day. And then you can animate by flipping pages. And, wee, right. look, and, and they do. You can actually see the movement of the sunspots going across, which is really cool. But yeah, that's why I make my students do it. I mean, because I, I teach three observational astronomy labs, and you you are forced to pay more attention to detail if you have to to draw what you are are looking at. And some people are like, well, I can't draw really well. Get get with the overall rough shading. You can see there's dark areas, light areas. If you can get kind of a rough shape, you know, each of one of those dark areas is a is a maria or a mare. If you can name. Ten of them, good. You get full credit. Great. So you know you can draw. You can find because we usually do it after you know we're pretty well into waxing gibbous. There's Copernicus. There's Tycho. You know there's Kepler and seven Mare or Maria. And okay, good. You're done. So more than that is extra credit. <laughs> more than that's extra credit. You heard it here, folks. Get your extra credit and send your sketches to Thad. Extra credit <laughs> in life. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a pretty cool way to, to teach people, you know, how to do observational things. Right? I mean, you're really getting them to to learn some skills about paying attention. Yeah. <laughs> that that's it. You know, I I tell them the the more that you can look through a telescope and record what you see, the happier it will be, the higher your grade will be. Right. So. Well, one of my first astronomy classes I took, we it was actually during the day, and we had to go out and observe, and so we put a bunch of white light filters on some C6s, and we sketched the sun. And then we went out a week later, and a week later, so we could actually watch the sunspots move from week to week and seeing how that was going. And that was really cool. It gives you an idea that everything's rotating, and it's not just us. And there's movement going on, this big hot ball. 
that it was that, that first time when it sunk in that there's there's more movement to the to the sun than just rising and setting because of our our movement. But right. there's these complex systems going on, and that that's when I really started loving uh, solar dynamics and helio seismology. I love helio seismology. <laughs> The sun's cool because things actually change there. Yeah, that, that, they, like almost hour to hour sometimes. Yeah, that was that was my imitation of a sunquake, by the way. <laughs> oh, wait, let's see it. Let me see your sunquake. So okay, wow. so we, we, we got a P mode. We've got an S mode going. Well, actually, no, we wouldn't Whoa. have any. We wouldn't have any S modes. Never mind, right? Because it's not a solid. Nope. So P modes you get, yes. But no S modes because it's not solid. So. Depends on how much fear you NGC had. the eight nine three, right, Roy? 891. So this is the photo you just shared your you because you showed this us last week and you put up your finished product. Is it a little right. bit this was it is, earlier today? Yeah, this is uh, this is a on the fly image of uh, two minutes for each filter. Basically, what I did last weekend, right at the end of the star party, and I said I was going to take and take the entire week and do nothing but this image. So I spent the entire week. Doing that, so that's what you get for four minutes, and so a really quick, wow, yeah, and awesome. a really quick process, and this is what you get for 21 hours. I can't wait. So I know. Drum roll, drum roll, drum roll. Let's see. Oh wow, Holy that's amazing. Cow. You can see the dust lanes and everything through there. This is uh, wow. this is seven hours on each channel. Jeez, wow. man. Uh, uh, L R L R G B. Yeah, this no, this is just R G B. I didn't even do luminance. Really? Why not? Yeah, no luminance. Holy snap! I didn't have do you time. really need it? I, I mean, look time. at that. You know, no. <laughs> Was this been one by it's, one or? Um... Yep, all one by one. Awesome. I don't. I don't really bend anything except that is for gorgeous. the VSP here, so make it faster. Right. That is really gorgeous. I well, counted in the in the full frame of this because this is a little bit cropped, mm -hmm. so I could take. I mean, because it's a small object, so I counted in the un uncropped version about eight or nine other galaxies. Could but could you put your one, your full image up into the event page after we're done? I I want to see the uncropped version. Yeah. To be able to play with that would be one. I did. I did a version of this once, and um, after la this is last year after Roy showed this image, and um, I counted. I think it was like thirty-seven galaxies in in the field of view. Yeah. I mean, wow. it's just you know, it, it's just amazing. Out. In this one here, you can see there's see. one. There's one right down here underneath the galaxy. There's mm -hmm. one over here on the left. There's oh, yeah. another one on the yeah. left. There's, if you go up top, where is it? I saw one up here. And now I can't find it. I saw it a minute ago. You lost an entire galaxy. Room. I lost a <laughs> galaxy. You better find that marble. I got more galaxies than you did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. It's right there. Uh, I, you know, I've, yeah. I've stumbled on some really galactic, rich areas of the sky before. And, like, once you start counting beyond, like, three or four, you're like... Uh, this is just amazing that there are so many galaxies yeah. can, out there, right? I can show you what the, the uncropped version looks like. Yeah, that'd be great. I mean, you think about it, you have hundreds of billions of stars in that one little part of your image, and then you're seeing multiples of them all over the place. It's just, it you can't count that high even trying to estimate. Trying to grasp that is so difficult. You just end up doing scientific notation, and it doesn't mean anything anymore. Right. Yeah, and I mean, this was my my dissertation was on putting together a catalog of of galaxy clusters, and so over you know about a quarter of the sky. I've been revising it, but over about a quarter of the sky, um, there are more than forty thousand clusters of galaxies between redshift point zero five and redshift about point six. So what do you um, mean by that? Like point zero five so, and point six. So the, the problem here is trying to tell distance involving things with general relativity. If we look at co-moving distances and our current understanding of dark matter, or dark energy, um, etc., you're looking from about seven hundred million to it's about nine billion light years out. Okay. Co-moving distance. So it's not all the way. You know, it's it's not even. You're you're still in the realm where dark energy kicked in in, in part of that uh, uh, that volume of space. 
uh, but still, you know, okay, fine, let's count stars in a galaxy, let's count galaxies in a cluster, and then you know, when you get to numbers of clusters, you're talking tens of thousands, and that's over a quarter of the sky, so you go over the whole sky, hundreds of thousands of clusters of galaxies. That's awesome. Wow. Oh, and here's Stewart's. Yeah, so this was mine. This is um, this is back when I had my digital SLR, and um, this is the one where I counted something like 37 uh, galaxies in this field of view. It's it's not quite as sharp and as nice as Roy's, obviously, but um, uh, I was actually very pleased with it at the time, uh, just because it's like, wow, look how many galaxies you can just see in just in my you know that little field of view. It just it just blew me away. Right. You know, and I know how they are, but it still blew me away. So I, I think what I'm going to start doing for for you guys, because I'm a sadist, but also because I love what you guys do, is like have an object or an area of the sky of of a month, so you guys can put together your biggest, longest exposure to find just a, a great field and Roy to share it. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I was actually going to bring that up and say, you know, I didn't even think of doing this image until last last Sunday. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, it would be great if if uh, if somebody could give me an object to do for the week, and if the weather's good, I'd do it. I think so. Everyone listening, watching, please leave a comment. What do you want Roy to image? That's up, you know, at night for him. Don't pick stuff in the <laughs> southern hemisphere because you're gonna just get a long exposure <laughs> of the ground. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> so try to think of something that, that's gonna be up in the in the northern hemisphere at this time of year. And uh, leave your comments on, on YouTube in the event page, and we'll find something for, for Roy to image and get some really good... Uh, yeah, and, and um, I, I could do it. I mean, Roy's got his RC, and I've got my refractor, and we, you know, they're different focal lengths. And, um, yeah. Uh, I think that would be great to see, you know, see the difference, too, in what they... Just do. see the difference. I mean, he, I don't get as much time, because I don't have a remote observatory. I can't just push a button and go to bed like he does. Um, <laughs> well, you could, but it's not going to do much for you. No. <laughs> No, no, so that'd be great. So everyone out there uh, watching on YouTube and uh, Google Plus and everything like that, please give us some some suggestions. We'd love to uh, to turn this into a semi regular thing and see what we can do about getting yeah. some really good long deep exposures. Right. This this time of year the weather is usually pretty good and it's well, cold enough, so it's really still. The seeing is really good, so. And, and sometimes you can even combine exposures from different astronomers. Corey Schmidt and I uh, worked on one on the Eastern Veil and. Um, I provided the luminous data, and he did the RGB data, and it was, actually came out pretty well. Corey processed it in PixInsight, and it was kind of cool to see, you know, s see it all together. Yeah, I've never tried doing that from other from other cameras, but uh, I've seen people do it, and it mm -hmm. works pretty good. I mean, the nice thing with deep sky is you have no worries about like parallax or getting a possible shift in. Oh, yeah. wait, I'm viewing it from this angle. Right, exactly. It. It's freaking right. hundreds, <laughs> thousands, millions light of light years away. It How dare you speak trigonometry in here? With parallax? <laughs> <laughs> it's astronomy, not math. <laughs> I'm not speaking anything. I'm just watching my finger jump back and forth as I go from one eye to the other. That's, that's no trigger. That's astronomy is math. <laughs> yeah. It is, and so yeah, that's what we mean by parallax. It's just the the apparent. <laughs> Shift in something based on the angle you're looking at. Although the parallax from, say, you know, David and me, because we're on opposite <laughs> sides of the country, of looking at the moon, it would be kind of cool to to maybe yeah, get would. a stereo vision of the moon. You know. Yeah, one does red and the other does blue. <laughs> yeah. Get the and, little and, red green goggles on it. <laughs> well, and this is you know how we're able to, you know we're able to do parallax with our orbit around the sun for things that are really close to us to measure their distance by doing using right triangles, very simple geometry. But this is how we're able to find distance to pretty close objects is by waiting to be on the other side of the sun and knowing what those angles are, looking at that object and seeing how things shift behind it, and we're able to uh, actually measure those distance and get an idea of. Um, how, and use those as ways to reference other objects going on as well. So it's really cool how even some some basic geometry is used with astronomy, and then things get a little crazy from there. You know, pretty really crazy with calculus and DiffieQ and all fun stuff. And then you hate yourself unless you love math. And I like math. I don't love math. So. <laughs> I'm... So we got about three minutes left. Um, I don't know if you, Roy, are you pulling up the last image? I am doing the eastern now. I got about another two minutes on the image. Okay, cool. And Michael, what are you up to besides playing on your computer? 
Are you playing Space Invaders again? <laughs> Pew. Pew. I think he's muted. He is muted, so I'm just going to yeah. keep right. talking while, well, he, while he, he can't was, respond. In chat, he said something about going outside because he wasn't sure what uh, might be going on with the scope. So, well, all right. Well, I'm going to go over to David to get our last view of the raccoons. There, mm. there's, there's some pretty cool little. Uh, I was looking at that crater that's got that bifurcation through the. It looks like a like a like a deer footprint there or something. It's actually uh, Co Coning is the name of that crater. I'd never seen it before. The, huh. This is right around Alphonsus and a few other craters. Those large ones with the center. Arzachel, right? Arzachel's like, that center like a, one. Yeah. It looks like a snowman that got yeah, like yeah. A sh got shot in the head and is falling oh, the, backwards. The three yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The three major well, isn't, uh, isn't Alphonse the one that was Ranger Seven impacted in? I think it might be. Yeah, it, yeah. That's that's yeah. that one. The center of the snowman is Alphonse. Alphonse's. Yeah, I remember seeing that on TV when I was a kid. They yeah. broadcasted it live as it went into the moon. Oh, very cool. It's down there somewhere now. The wreckage. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So here's a question for Thad from uh, YouTube. Uh, Eric's actually been giving a lot of good questions, but I'm excited about this just because it's coming up soon. So is the galaxy where Doctor Who is from real? If so, can we get a real image of it, please? So um, is, is there a place where Gallifrey is? Well, I mean, with the number of possible habitable planets that, that came out from the estimates from this past week... That's, you know, that's, I think it's that's possible. Entirely, that's, oh, here's you know, what you have to figure out. Possible. You need to figure out what the uh, what's the uh, where the, the time ward lock is, the, the nebula or whatever it is. You need to figure out what that's a pit, actually a picture of. We should. We should find out. So what I need to do, I'll do some research. Yeah, and, and, see, and see if they've actually designated a real galaxy where this is supposed to be from or a real area of the sky, some constellation that we can point things at, and we can go hunting for, for the Doctor. And hunt for yeah, you Gallifrey. find the Medusa Cascade, and maybe we could backtrack to Gallifrey. We could. So or the VSP it. hunt for, <laughs> <laughs> for the time war. <laughs> oh, we got we got a spy on the phone. Yeah, uh, we got to go. Uh, I've got a, a Dalek coming through. We'll see you guys later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Roy, I see you're pulling stuff up. Is it just finishing up the processing? Yep, I'm not even going to stretch this one. I'm just going to take it as is. Awesome. So I'm going to do a quick wrap of the comments to see if I missed anything going through. And so uh, people were asking about Ison. I know Thad and I are looking for at the week, the weekend, the, su the Sunday after Thanksgiving, we're hopefully going to go out to the desert and image Ison. Yeah, I got I got a call that my my DSLR is fixed. So nice. um, yeah, I want to you know first of all try some stuff with getting with Venus and the Moon and whatnot with it. I've got to get a, a T adapter. But the thing is, if Ison is going to do anything like they say it's going to, you don't want to shoot it through a telescope. You want as wide a field of view as possible. Right. And uh, and again, and also a good bit of luck. Luck with yes. the weather, luck with the comet surviving, luck with, you know, it's, yeah, yeah it's, there'll be a lot of luck with trying to get ice. I, in I, I hope it survives, but I, I also hope it destroys do. itself, because I, I think it would be awesome to observe. If it's, if it's bright enough, you should be able to shoot with the DSLR right on a tripod. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. Just 15, 20 second exposures. Uh, That's second what I'm exposure. hoping to do, because I'll, I'll have my, uh, my fine picks with me, and yeah, I think it'll be fun. It'll be cold, especially if we're going to Joshua oh, yeah. Tree. Woo! Yeah, and then you, th that's the other thing, getting out there early enough to kind of scout around, and it's like, okay, where can we watch sunrise without a mountain blocking it or right. something? Because, I mean, it's it's going to be very low in the sky um, just before sunrise. Right, and so for once, we don't have to worry about light pollution. We just have to worry about the freaking mountains in the way. Yeah. <laughs> Bring, Not bring one thing, it's another. Bring enough TNT, you know, yeah. <laughs> low, 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 low yield we'll take, nuclear we'll device. Take care of it. There we We're go. scientists. Yeah, why mass happen. pollution? Anywhere along the Atlantic, if you can get a nice eastern horizon there that's flat right along the ocean, that would be great. Yeah, yeah. from from Florida, because, I mean, yeah, November to, to March over there, the skies can be really amazing. So Yeah, yeah this is the best Go for it, David. Here. Yeah, I might head over. The, well, I'm going over the Atlantic side for the Maven launch next week, but so. Ison will still be kind of faint then. But yeah, Thanksgiving weekend. I mean, now if we could get Ison with the VAB, <laughs> there would be. Now that's, you know, that would you know, be a heck of a shot. You know, you're planting an idea in my head. Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's take a look here at Roy's image here, and we'll wrap it up. 
So we're looking at now the Eastern Vale. Wow, that, that's great. And this is another 300 seconds? Uh, this is uh, 180 seconds. 180 seconds. 180 second hydrogen alpha. So like we were mentioning earlier, we're watching the other side of the supernova remnant, and this is just enormous. And what's your field of view that you're looking at? So how big of the sky does your... Oh, great, great question. Yeah, it is a good question. Um, I don't have that off the top of my head. What kind of professional are you, Roy? I know it. <laughs> Jeez. I'd, I'd bet it's about a degree. I can tell you. No, it's, can, it's, it's less than a degree. I can, uh, I can tell you all I have to do is load up my program here. Between and, a half uh, and a whole. Yeah, something like that. It's less uh, than mine. So that's about what mine is. Yeah. It's, and uh, it's, yeah. Field of view. I am at. Where is it? Where is it? Where You're going to talk in arc sec, arc minutes, aren't you? <laughs> yes. It's 45, 45 by 34 arc minutes. Yeah. So it's about half a degree. So that's that's a, a moon and a half by a moon. Right. So we're, so looking at this and the size of the moon, and this is just one little part. Yeah. Uh, this enormous object that's in the sky that that happened, which occurred five around five to eight thousand years ago and has just been pushing out ever since. And it's beautiful. Have, have you, have you, Roy, or actually anyone here, have you guys ever got the full part of the veil? Cor Corey has. The, the, yeah. the, the, the was it Cygnus Loop? Is that yeah, in, in order to get it, you really yeah. need to have just um, a, like a telephoto lens, like a 200 millimeter telephoto lens, because you need that, it's that big. Right. You know, I tried you, a mosaic on it once about 10 months ago, Yeah. the first one I ever did. And it's not that easy. <laughs> now, what, what kind of in my in my bucket list of of astronomy crap I want to get is a uh, you know is a, a really nice uh, you know L series two hundred millimeter telephoto lens so I can photograph stuff like this the whole Cygnus loop. Mm. Yeah, there I know Gary go. has done some amazing, you know, huge fields of view kind of shots. Right. I think he posted one the other day of Orion with Barnard's Loop and most of Gemini and parts of Auriga and, and Taurus all in, in one shot. Yeah, his shot. setup is, is know, ideal for that kind of stuff. Yeah, he has an enormous field of view. Well, we're running about five minutes past, so uh, I'm turning into a pumpkin. Or actually, I have, I have a lot of <laughs> video editing to do. So for uh, those of you who didn't know, Fraser and I were at YouTube Studios in L.A. this week, including Thad. Thad was there. At least for one day. You were there for one day. And we had a fun we were at the weekly space hangout. Uh, David Dickinson was there by proxy via the Internet. So was that fun. was that was fun, and yeah, so we have a lot of video editing to do. I think you got around 12 hours of raw footage that he needs to go through and create explainer videos. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm glad that I had, I, I had like an hour and a half to deal with, and that's enough for me, but he's got 12 <laughs> hours. So, But he also did a lot of interviews. So thank you, everybody, for all your great questions, comments, the uh, pleasant banter on YouTube. See, you it's not the cesspool of evil that everyone's <laughs> making it out to be. Until you said that. Yeah. You, know, and I will yeah. you, you jinxed now. it now, man. We, we, we've got a good audience, be honest. Right? Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Really good audience. Sick sure. above table, right? You guys are awesome. Thank you for the questions in the Q&A app on the event page. And so, yeah, if you guys have any uh, images that you take, please share them out on the event page. We'd love to to showcase them here in the show. So uh, let's go through our astronomers here. David, thank you for the shots of the moon. Thank you. It was actually a nice night. No mosquitoes tonight. Absolutely. And so where can people find you? I am on Astro Guys with the Z across all platforms, and I'm usually oh, writing for Universe Today, Lewis Tesor, my own site, and, and profusely tweeting. Profusely and yes. unapologetically tweeting his face Pretty off. much. All space, all the time. Is Michael there? I am, yes. I was leaving you with the California Nebula. There. Oh, we'll put and, it back uh, up. It's my home. Right. Hey, yes, that's right. <laughs> Let me see where uh, I live. Well, yeah, uh, by the way, I'm a, Pan I'm a Panthers fan, so I uh, so apologize to all the Niners fans that live in California tonight. <laughs> oh, you talking about just, hand egg again? Oh, yes, hand yeah, egg is my, egg. It's my yeah. second sport, yes, besides, okay. besides astronomy. So this is just the top portion here. I can't get the whole thing in. and I, My filter wheel was acting up. That's why I had to leave for a minute and... 
I found the hydrogen alpha filter and the California Nebula popped up. So there you go. <laughs> there we go. So red, bro- red Bluff and Eureka. And- yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> The funny thing is that the moon was directly shining on the scope, and it just happened to be pointed in this direction. So I said, all right, let's well, see what we can do with hydrogen that, alpha. That's why God made there. hydrogen yeah. alpha filters. So. That's right. It came up <laughs> pretty good. This is, just, this is only two minutes in a bin, three by three bin, so I can't Oh, that's say, nice. You know? Yeah. yeah. Very, Very good. good. The moon, so. Well, how about you, Mike? Let's see your face. Yes. Hello, so I got my camera working. Everything Yay. is good in, in the Phillips house now that my kids are asleep and my telescope is working. I can't complain. <laughs> and we're starting our shows earlier so you can play with us more often. Yeah. Yes. All right, Roy. Thank you, sir. No problem. Yeah, if, if you could put out that, that full uh, uncropped image into the event page, that would be brilliant. I'd love to okay. see what you did. That was awesome. So, yes, and everyone out in the comments, too, please tell us what Roy's homework is for the week. That would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, mine, too. Yeah, once and, to oh, yeah, once you get your focuser back, yeah. that will be great. Speaking of, Stuart. Hi, thank you. Dr. Foreman. It's been a couple of weeks since I've been here, and um, but I'm, I hope to be back in, back in the saddle within a couple of weeks, so we'll we'll see. We have to, too, you got to represent the, the refracting group over yes, here. Yes, absolutely. What kind of focuser do you have, or? Did I've got a Starlight it? Express focuser. It's a very okay. nice focuser. It just was sort of worn, and oh, um, nice. my fine focuser knob was slipping, and so I just sent it back. And they were just hideously busy over there. And yeah. uh, they've been they've been very nice and responsive. It's just that they just not ha- haven't been able to get to it until until now. But it's done. They just need to ship it back. Uh, that's how I am with your text messages to me. Like, yeah, yeah. I can't get back to this. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bad. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I love you too, Scott. <laughs> I, I miss you. Yeah. So Thad, thank you for uh, for jumping in. I know that you had some things going on locally, but I'm glad that you were able to join us. So sure, yeah, no problem. I was uh, actually doing a little bit of outreach in the the front yard. Had the the giant binoculars set up, and people were stopping by and saying, so, "All right, well, let's go look at some stuff." And that's right. That's, cool. that's right. You can do astronomy in Long Beach. Yes, it is possible. Yes, no excuses, light polluted people. We can do it here. Just you know, you know, next week. Next week, I think I'll be able to get Jupiter. I think I see it way down in the trees, kind of awesome. trying to. I think I think it will be clear of the trees by next time next week. Cool, That'll be great, Tom. Thank you, yes. sir. Oh, glad to be here. Get rid of your clouds and join us sometime. <laughs> I wish. I my my uh, little hair dryer using my telescope just isn't powerful enough. <laughs> well, <laughs> talk to David. Clouds, David, <laughs> he's the master when it comes to hair drying at <laughs> <Yeah>. DSP. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, yes. I read an article in Sky and Telescope said you're not supposed to use a hairdryer on your telescope, but it works. Really? Well, they're, they're, everybody they're, does it. Everybody. Yeah, I know. Who, they, who hasn't? They, they, well, they it's were because they it. they love the '80s style and the, with the flyaways they, they, going on. Like, no, they, oh. they were saying to heat the mirror evenly, you should use a heat gun. But I'd be like, that would take the entire VSP to. To get the moisture up. It'd not really. Very slow. <laughs> you know that that just sounds a little scary too, because I mean, heat gun can concentrate heat so well. What if you end up, you know, yeah. breaking your corrector plate? Yeah. 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 yeah that's. <laughs> you, you get one of those bonnet st- style uh, hair dryers. You know, it I, covers the entire I, head. I, I think I think they were they were saying with with the hair dryer, it would heat the mirror too quickly, and in, in that I don't think it would crack oh. it, but it would, it would cause turbulence. Like. Right. You just gotta have a steady hand, you know, like a hairdresser. You just gotta yeah. go around and, and yeah, yeah. Sort of just, goals and... just you know, become an esthetician and you'll yeah. know how to <laughs> shoot yeah. off. All right, <laughs> we're done here. All right, <laughs> okay, guys. Thank you all for watching. Uh, we will be back next week with another virtual star party. Um, I don't know if Fraser's doing his army cast tomorrow. I we will be having weekly space hangout on Friday, virtual star party again on Sunday, and then really cool news: um, Maven's launching on the next following Yay. Monday. Yay, Maven! Yes. Can't wait for that. So that's going to be one. It's planned for one thirty Eastern, um, which is what ten thirty Pacific. Pacific. So, like that, yeah. yeah, so I, I know the Planetary is doing a, a live broadcast of it. It's going to be on NASA TV. So even though the government shut down, we're still launching Maven on time, which is awesome. So uh, look for that in the news. And so, yeah, I'm Scott Lewis. I am Bald Astronomer from Nose Cosmos, the Star Party, all the world. And thank you all for watching, and we'll okay. see you guys next week. Bye. 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 Have a good night. <laughs>